Seven is a developer and a digital agency. We're based in New Cross in London. Um, we have a, a sort of background in sort of the youth education sector. Um, I uh, set up another company eight years ago, uh, Roll Seven Rolling Sound, which is a, a multimedia training provider. We deliver courses to young people uh, around London. Um, and Roll Seven sort of is a sister company that was set up three years ago. Um, and really, our sort of main aim is to develop computer games that make a difference. Um, and hopefully, with what we've just developed, we've got some way to achieving that. Um, here is guide. Here we go. This headset here. Um, and I'll pass it around in a sec. Um, in 2008, we were introduced by the Serious Games Institute in Coventry to um, NeuroSky. It was a prototype phase at that stage. Um, it looked like a but um, we saw some opportunity there, and we we realised that there would be um, at some point uh, definitely a sort of an opportunity. So we we invested quite a substantial amount of money in becoming an OEM partner, um, and then we since sort of developed a number of different applications um, for the NeuroSky headset. Now, the NeuroSky headset is a brain-computer interface. It takes um, electrostatic impulses from your head and turns that in through an algorithm uh, into code that we can then use within computer games. Um, for a long time, three years, we haven't had a killer app until we set up a partnership with a company in Australia called NeuroCog. Uh, Neurocog are a um, they're a venture capital partnership between um, a venture capitalists and the University of Wollongong in Australia, uh, and they've basically been doing academic research into ADHD. Uh, I'm sure everyone here has heard of ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, um, and essentially they put together a game that was for training. It was um, a series of activities that would help young people with ADHD to control their symptoms. Um, and what they realized through this game is that they could actually achieve a dramatic improvement in those young people's uh, behavior. However, the game that they had was terrible and it needed some gamification. So we're here to talk about gamification in applications for health. Um, the game that they had was boring, but essentially it was just a bunch of applications. Um, they weren't really wrapped in any sort of format. Um, they were repetitive. Um, they were very boring, um, there was no customization for the users, um, and the most important part was young people didn't want to play them. Their parents had to pay them to continue on with the training that they were doing. Um, and also, they were a constant reminder of the young people's um, issues, that they had ADHD. So they had to they'd play the game, and afterwards a bunch of graphs would come up and, and they'd show how they did. And really, for young people to see that, it's not ideal. You want to kind of possibly sort of hide that part, especially with the sort of the age of the young people we were working with. So we had some challenges, which John took. I'll hand over your challenge. Um, so it's sort of a, a, a crude statement, but it's not maths with ninjas. Um, if you've been on BBC Bite Size, things like that, <coughs> often I think the approach to education in games is, well, maths is boring, um, ninjas are cool, let's throw maths and ninjas together and hopefully they'll offset each other and we'll find ourselves somewhere in the middle with something that's quite fun. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have that luxury with Focus Pocus, uh, the, the game we've been developing for Neurocon. Um, they were very keen to keep the research um, that they had done into how this application actually works and how it trained young people. Um, and they didn't want us to change the gameplay that they developed because the, um, the sort of path that you took through your training uh, had been proved clinically and it was now published. Um, so unfortunately we didn't have the luxury of coming in and going, well that looks kind of boring, let's change all that, let's do it like this instead, because unfortunately this way had been proved. Um, the learning was very prescribed, they had to do 15 exercises a day, it took something like 20 minutes every single day, um, and you were basically playing three games over and over and over again. Um, and the only feedback you got at the end kind of looked like the heads up display on an F-22 fighter plane, you had a whole bunch of graphs, a whole bunch of numbers, Kids didn't really know if they'd done well or not. In fact, mum and dad didn't really have a look. They didn't really know if they'd done well or not. It was kind of down to the researchers who were running the focus groups and the testing and the training to come and look at it and go, yeah, Timmy's kind of getting better, don't worry. Um, so we were kind of trying to work out how we could take this, make it something that parents could install, sit their kid in front of, 
Um, and it really not be something that they just let the kids play and when, when he's playing it, he'll probably get better. Uh, we wanted them to be involved as well. Um, I kind of want to avoid using any more text. I'm going to just leave the gameplay in the background. Um, so they had three training exercises. One was working memory, which kind of helps the kids to retain short, uh, small amounts of information while they're in class. Uh, the other type of game is impulse control. And uh, these exercises that they developed to stop the kids calling out in class and help to reduce the kind of um, the need to call out or interrupt the classroom. Um, and then the final one of these cognitive challenges, which use the headset to require the child to uh, concentrate on the screen when there's a load of other distractions going on, uh, or to relax when there's something particularly exciting going on on the screen, and to remain calm. Um, so what we did is we took these three, essentially three different gameplay styles, we created 15 different mini games. Um, now each of these mini games you can kind of see you're either flying broomsticks or uh, making potions or repelling dragons or fighting nasty bearded wizards. Um, and all of these kind of tie into this wrapper that you're making your character into a cool wizard. There's no mention of the fact you're getting over ADHD anymore. Um, the better you do at getting over ADHD, as far as the kids are concerned, the more spells they can do, the more stuff they can fly, and the further they can go. So, at the end of every single game, instead of getting a whole bunch of graphs and like scary numbers and stats, uh, the child just gets between one and five stars. Um, now, one thing that was really important for us is obviously. If the kid does badly and keeps doing badly, they're not going to want to play anymore. Um, so you even get rewarded if you do really badly, you still get one star, you still unlock stuff, it's just not quite as cool as the stuff you unlock if you get five stars. Um, and there's literally hundreds and hundreds of things they can unlock. Um, now, as I was kind of said before, there's no point in unlocking something if like, it doesn't go anywhere. Like, great, you did really well, you got a one. Awesome, but what can I use it for? Well, so what we wanted to do was create a system of kind of carrot-based learning. Ultimately, the training exercises that they developed weren't that fun, and we can wrap them in this wizard thing, and we can kind of make it interesting, but it still doesn't get around the fact you're going to play 15 games, 12 times a day, for 25 days. Um, that's going to get tiresome. So what we created, on top of unlocking all these items, you then get a boss level at the end, where you fight a really badass wizard. Um, and every day, he gets kind of harder to beat and he's got more spells to shoot at you, he's got more magic that he can do for you. The better that you've done in your training, and all the items you unlock during your training give you more powers, more abilities, you can like jump higher and create land and shoot lightning. Also on this bit here, you can see a whole bunch of little numbers by the side of your spells. The better you do throughout your day of training, um, the more of the cool spells you can do when you're fighting the boss in this last challenge level. So if you do badly, you've got a bunch of the like standard spells, you've got a bunch of stuff you can do. If you do really well, suddenly you can like shoot lightning out of the sky or blow the whole guy up in one go. Um, and the other aspect we, were, we wanted to do was really to involve the parents in the training. I think there's a lot of stuff like BBC Five Size and also looking at things like Mushing Monsters, a lot of parents go, well it's okay because there's maths in there, he's doing some maths. Well how's he doing with maths? I don't know, he's just going to do some maths. Um, so what we wanted to do was give the parents like control over the learning without the child really being aware that mum was looking over their shoulder. So there's a separate web app, which unfortunately is still building, so I can't show you a whole bunch of the footage of it. But the parent can log into the website and see more statistical feedback on how their child's doing, whether they've leveled up, whether they've leveled down, how much they've achieved. Um, and the parent also gets feedback, uh, also gets questions. So every five days, um, back up the parent pops up a little thing and says, has Timmy been good in the real world today? And the parent says, well, yeah, yeah, he's been okay. He goes, do you want to reward him? And if you say yes, the next time Timmy logs into the game and says, hey, turns out you were being really good in the real world today, so you've unlocked this awesome spell. And the spells that the parents can reward the child with are way cooler than anything the child can actually unlock in the game through their own efforts. So it's kind of incentivizing them continuing their training and being good in the real world in order to get cooler stuff in the game. I'm going to pass back to Simon. So um, just for people here who are more business minded, um, the game itself, uh, there's a pro version with the parental feedback, um, that's uh, £199 with the headset. We've already had um, over 50,000 pre-orders um, from distributors all around Southeast Asia. Um, there's a big market for this in South Korea, China. Um, we have equity in the project, although we were paid to develop it, a slightly different model of working, but definitely worth looking at. Um, and we just received funding from the Singapore government to set up a research and development centre over there to develop three or more of these games. Um, and we're currently looking at investment in the UK, so it's 
I know the different things going on. I can cram it all in ten minutes, but if you're interested in any of the nonsense that we're doing, come and see us afterwards. Thanks, Thank sir. you.
they're fucking multiplayer as well, so you can get your friends or people with other profiles and you can link up with them and play that like boss level against other players and at the same time, at the same time use all your achievements and your battle of people. Um, so I think the idea is you put your 25 days of training and if the parent wants to continue on and wants them to keep using it, then they can do sort of like a triple training mechanism and they want to do a challenge for you to continue learning and continue to get hard. But obviously the research is based on that 25 day training, so it's not initially. <coughs> do you think the, there would be potentially the same principles to potentially have an endless one? So I know you said there's a challenge mode, but instead of branching up into a different do you think you focus, focus too, or the focus, focus? Or well, just some continuous on the scale yeah. of but possible. Yeah. Do you guys think, personally, that it would keep. Do you think there is a threshold of repetition yeah. where yeah. someone would think, actually, you know what? Okay. I've broken the code. I see that it's just going to get. It depends in. on how well you gamify it. Okay. Well, that I goes think, back to. I think yeah. with what we've built, this is obviously built around those 25 days, but in, in the time that we've been building it, we've obviously thought. If it was built around, if, 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 if you wanted to continue it on, on a sort of infinite level, then I think you'd have to be almost having a kind of uh, an MMO kind of world, like Warcraft world, where you can level up forever, ever, 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 yeah. and you've got more interaction with other people who are training at the same time. Then I think you could go on forever, but in this particular game, you know. <laughs> I missed your hand, just last quick one, sorry. Is the US guy flying this? We, we have some middleware as well that we can use that is slightly more efficient than those. <laughs> Simon's around, so maybe you can catch up with him. Alright, thanks, Simon.